This here is 500 video games worth $50,000, and we gotta figure out where to go from here. So in this video, we're gonna do exactly that and see how we're gonna move these games from these tables into the hands of collectors around the world. All right, I, don't, I honestly don't know how we're gonna fully film this. This could be like a three month process to sell everything because we have really big plans with this collection. Uh, but while it's all here and kind of, you can see most of it, there's stuff under the tables behind Sky Guy here. Um, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna just talk through what I'm thinking because 90% of this collection was sealed. I paid massive money for it. Uh, it was all price charted. Shout out to Dwight who sold it to me. He kept everything in immaculate condition for the most part. Bought them at retail, put them in boxes and stored them away for decade, over a decade in a lot of cases, even two decades in some cases. So these have just been in a basement, sealed up for so long. And I'm, I'm excited to get these into the hands of collectors that will value and cherish them. And I think he was excited about that too. So it's kind of cool that that's what's gonna happen. But I paid, you know, so much money that I need to make sure that in some cases, you know, I can maximize. Um, so we're looking at like these over here, Tony Hawk's Pro Skaters. Those are iconic and these things are in beautiful, immaculate condition. Those are sealed in case you can't see. Sealed. <laughs> so I probably got to get those graded. Um, I think there's a lot of upside there and I'm hopeful. There's a Castlevania Bloodlines in, inside of here. Very rare, sealed, same story. These are all black label, really nice PS1 games that are sealed. So like this is my potentially graded stack, but if I'm grading something, I wanna make sure it's gonna get a really, really high grade. Um, and the thing is, it's tough because almost everything in this collection could. Yeah, yeah, so a lot of it, I'm just gonna sell raw and let whoever buys it decide, but some of it I definitely gotta send off myself. And then you've got like really high-end used games like this Atari Jaguar collection. All those are used. There's a couple that are sealed over there. Um, same with 32X, which this is actually the first thing that we've got to start on. And I think some of those we might actually sell like in tomorrow's auction. As we're filming this today, you might be seeing who knows when you're going to see this. Could be a while from now. But those might be sold. We're listing them all kind of on the high end and we've got a plan to do a tiered discount as the whatnot show goes on and they might all be gone by the end of it. But all these back here are sealed GameCube games. Which there's stuff from, you know, Zelda all those. to Mario Party to like lower end stuff like Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell or Fight Night Round 2. I love Tom Clancy. <laughs> That's what I said, <laughs> Tom Clancy. <laughs> so I'm going to have to make decisions on what stuff to grade from there, what stuff not to grade, what stuff just to sell right away. Uh, I'm going to add stuff to the collection too. So the Pokemon trading card game, that's beautiful. Got to grade that. It gives me, personally, it gives me uh, anxiety <laughs> to keep things sealed that are in great condition. Like I got to get those. At minimum, get them protected and displayed nicely, regardless of what you think about grading. I think there's value in just having them protected and stored in a, in a, and displayed in a really nice way. So Pokemon Stadium is another one. That is factory sealed. Both sticker seals are on that. And then Pokemon Puzzle League. So those are all going to the collection. That's just beautiful. Yeah. Great additions. And then this is my second sealed Game Boy Color. We should probably go look at the other one. <laughs> uh, the same exact color I have. Uh, another teal one. Mm, same exact color I have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to tease you this whole time. I'm just having fun. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, I got to see which one is better. Oh, one looks sun faded. Looking at them. Which one is sun faded? Is it this one? These are two different colors. Like, they, that's more of a blue. What? I can't tell what it's supposed out of, to be originally. Did they run out of ink? It doesn't ink? look like it's sun faded. That's the thing. Yeah. It's like it's just a different. Is this print. one fake? That is weird, man. It's got to be just a different. Like, it's a different ink. print, different ink. Because I don't think anymore. But no. I, I would say this one that I just got is a little bit better, but not much. No. Even with know. the sticker, it's better. I, I don't know. For now, I'm going to say this is going to be my personal copy. I'm trying to get every handheld ever made in the box in the best condition I possibly can. So the end game for that is new and graded. Uh, but that's a long journey. All right. It's like 20 years from now. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing I'm excited for, and I think you guys are going to find in this video, is how much we're going to learn along the way. Because, oh, yeah. like... There's games in here that we're not going to find ever again, and learning about them now will only help us in the future and maybe make yes. predictions on what could be more valuable in the future. 
That's true. That's true. It, my favorite part, probably, of the collection is the complete virtual boy set. So 14 U.S. games. We got them all. Now the Jack Bros is, is the holy grail. And in that condition, it is used, but it was opened with like an X-Acto knife. So it's got the wrapping. The box is just pristine under there. I got to grade that. I think I have to, just because it is a one of a kind piece in that condition. And then it's a question, so like there's these five are sealed. I'll probably grade most of all of those because they're all so nice. And then like this is a, quite a rare game in this condition, Waterworld. I'm not sure about that, we'll see. My, my goal is to, you know, preserve the history of games in this condition as much as possible and you know to get it in the right hands of collectors that's my favorite part about this business is finding the high-end stuff that's been in a basement forever and getting it out there so i'm really passionate about that i'm gonna have to make decisions on on a lot of these and uh honestly the vast majority of these games we're gonna do all in our biggest whatnot auction ever which i'm really excited about that's gonna be crazy but the stuff that i get graded that i'm not keeping <laughs> I want that to be back for that auction, mm -hmm. which is probably gonna be like two and a half, three months from now with the plans we have. So we gotta get it sent off now because I think grading is about two months out right now. Yeah, and it's another upfront cost, which is I think why we're, we're gonna be selling some of these 32X things, maybe in our whatnot Yeah, maybe as cover some filming. of the grading fees and cover, I mean, this is a lot of stuff to keep on hand for three months. It's a lot of capital yeah. tied up. Um, so what's your thought as far as how much you want to spend? Is it a matter of value for how much you want to spend on grading fees? Like yeah, what's, I mean, what's the cost to grade? I think it's like 60 bucks a game right now, depending on which company you use. Um, so it's kind of between VGA, CGC, and WADA. Um, and I, to me, it's, it's about who is doing the best work at grading accurately uh, and also, which company has the return on investment? Those two are the dominant thoughts in my mind for which company to use, and I have to do a little bit more research before I decide who I'm going to go with on that. Because at this point, CGC is a new player. They're new. They're new, optimistic for the future. There's not a ton of you know history, um, and their grading is a little bit sporadic right now. They're kind of getting it locked in. I like to see a little bit more consistency because comics, they're doing great. Coins, they're doing great, but they're really doing video games. Now, VGA is the only company right now that would grade something like that. That is a brand new Wii U. And then this is a brand new PS2. Would you get both those graded? I would definitely consider it, you know. And then it's the question of, like, this Virtual Boy, which is, he was the original owner of. It's not new, but it was basically opened, like, taken out, played with a little, and put right back in all the wrappings, everything. It looks like nothing was ever touched, it honestly. It looks new, man. <laughs> it looks unbelievable. And, like, should I get... You know, I don't know. So all those decisions in this video, <laughs> we're, we're going to have answers to a lot of those. And we're going to have results of sales and all of that stuff. See if we're actually going to make some money on this crazy collection. And as you have questions, please comment them because we probably will do a follow-up yeah. video to this like soon, soon after. Yeah, please so, post your questions down below. We'll, we'll definitely address some of them. All right, Chase, it's the next day. <laughs> And I'm going to <laughs> show everybody uh, what I did while you were gone. I'm and, glad you did something. Yeah, for once. It's about time. So everything on this graded table, aside from this, um, I think we're just going to wrap all these up and revisit them later. Definitely all potential grading candidates because of the condition. Panic Bomber, there's like a little crease right there. And right there, we're being hyper picky, but unfortunately, it's not going to make the cut. But that being said, it's still probably the best copy in existence, so we'll put it right there. If there's one better, I dare you to find it. Yeah, we'll probably get it next week. Yeah. It'll be a <laughs> once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. <laughs> so, uh, all the games, for the most part, we moved here. So this entire shelf is all the sealed stuff, and we can kind of see what there's the most of. So a full row of GameCube games. And we haven't even really picked through those on uh, what we could, you know, potentially grade or add to the collection either. So Chase might do that later. We have all the Jaguar games. We have all the PS2 games, and then we found more, so we had to add them down here. 
we have a lot of PSP. And it's surprising, Matt, you were saying that there's some games that are even sealed, only worth like 10-ish bucks. Then Alex, you were saying that's crazy because... Because the average sales price is still, the average value is still over 100 bucks. Yeah. So that's, that's super cool. Um, but I think the next step from here is, well, shoot, I don't know. So we're going to figure it out. <laughs> all right, so I know what we're going to do. Alpal listed all these 32X games. These were the last games, essentially, that's missing from that shelf. Yeah. Um, whoa, what'd, you, what'd you find? What'd you Some do? Definitely heavy hitters. I mean, these ones are kind of the lower ball ones, um, probably like 30, 40, 50 bucks a piece. Okay. And then all these right here are the heavy hitters. Um, the biggest disappointment was this, the Cleavery. I don't know if you can see that, all the tape. So it's definitely on the lower end. Why is that? Comps. Like why did, was it there a big rip on the cover or something? No, it, it looks like there's a little rip right here. But, but as far not. as taping the whole box, I cannot tell why they would have done that. That's weird. I did see in one of these boxes, there was like a Blockbuster sticker on the back of a manual. Oh, okay. So I don't know if like maybe that's a Blockbuster you know, block copy. Blockbuster love to ruin games. Yep. Uh, these are all... Ooh, heavy one. hitters um i think i would not put that one on the bottom yeah <laughs> these are all like i think around 150 a piece maybe a little lower maybe a little higher is that factoring in condition yeah that's factoring in condition like i would have listed this higher like tempo but it's got some obvious wear so um, say you're listing tempo and you're looking up previous solds how how in detail do you look at condition of previous listings before you price yours if it's a higher end game, a lot more than if it's like a forty dollar game. Okay. Um, yeah, like especially if it's like super minty, I'm very touchy on what condition is. Mm -hmm. And then if it's super nice, I'll price it way over anything. Like Blackthorn, I priced it super high. Um, Cause that's just because it's in great condition. Like mm -hmm. the I'm not gonna pull out the manual because it's hard, but the cartridge is in great condition. The insert and everything is in great condition. So I think. I think I put this up for like five eighty. What's the normal for that? Four fifty. Okay. So, I think I mean four fifty is even high, but that's like one of the latest solds. Mm -hmm. But like but new this price, condition is still better than yeah, that. Yeah, like new price is like six hundred and above. But so five eighty would be amazing if we got that. But still, because I mean, you're also pricing to accept offers. Right. Of course. Yes. Um, here's I think this is the second biggest game. Knuckles. Oh. Knuckles, I don't know, Chaotix, yeah. Um, again, this game is in minty condition. So we priced this to the moon. I think we priced this one at $600. Wow. Um, this is a very sought after one and more yeah. well known than Blackthorn. Yeah. Again, this is like super um, way above comps, but we actually just sold a box only game that was listed for 600 way above comps and it sold within 12 hours. Which usually means we priced it too low. <laughs> yes. So, you know, the worst that could happen is it doesn't sell, so we lower the price. That, so that's we don't thing. get hurt on that. Mm -hmm. So we always want to try to price super high. And then these guys over here. Where it deserves it. <laughs> well, yes. We don't price everything. Crazy. No, we don't price everything super high, but super, like, great condition, sought after stuff. Like, we've been, we've been pricing GameCubes at $600. Yes, They're just yes, not selling, no. so we're going to bring it down. Yeah. Um, and then these guys Ooh, turn on the light box. Worms let's, let's get a good look at these. This is uncommon, very uncommon for the N64, especially in box. Yes, like so. These are very rare. I think um, just boxes. They have inserts. Well, no, this. They don't have the manual. That's what they don't have. Okay. They don't have the manual. Um, well, this one doesn't have the manual. Uh, this one, I think we put up for a grand. Mm -hmm. yeah, this I think one it's we, like the fifth most expensive N64 game, yeah, just the cartridge. Yeah. One so I don't even... sold complete for fourteen hundred. Okay, so that's so, about right. So yeah, four hundred dollar yeah. manual. <laughs> I mean, um, but the box is the most rare thing. But this one has like yeah. a nick here, um, and it actually doesn't have the cartridge because we took that out and decided to sell it separate because mm -hmm. the cartridge has some obvious sun fading. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, what would be the value difference in, or I guess explain more your decision in listing that separate versus just putting it with the box? I think just because the box is so rare that we mm -hmm. don't want to degrade the value of the box with 
a with a lesser cartridge. cartridge. So I think we deem this like a two hundred dollar cartridge. So we put this one to like seven hundred because the box already has like a ding in it. But because it's so rare, mm -hmm. we still keep the price high, and obviously we accept offers. Cool. I think. Oh, and then we have another Calibri cartridge. Oh right, yeah, we have <laughs> great cartridge. And then that baby doll. What is up with that? I don't need to say anything about that. Okay. And the only thing I don't know where to put right now is all these like big boxes. Um, this Wii U is brand new. We talked about that and we might send that off for grading, but getting anything graded that's cardboard is really tough. So we'll have to figure that out and get these in a safe spot in the meantime. We actually never talked about this bin. Yeah. <laughs> we got all the PS2, one of these Buzz. Yeah. yeah. Buzz Jr. Robo Jam. There go. There's a bunch of different ones. I think the jungle one is actually good. Is it not? Not every day you see the complete set of PS2 Buzz games. <laughs> we got them right there. It's goofy. Oh no. Um, so what's what's the play here? We have all this stuff. Like, do we bin it up? Do we bubble wrap it? I think the, the majority of the stuff we need to bin up and save for the for the big big whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, but this one I want to grade probably. Okay. That is red new. Yep, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Um, and then grading systems. Did we talk about who the only people that can grade consoles? Oh, yeah, VGA yeah, right yeah, now. So WADA or CGC would have to add that. I think CGC would be more likely to. So I would much rather send consoles to one of one of them. VGA, it's tough to send them stuff because it's still like a paper form. Maybe they've updated that. I don't know. But that's the only way for the custom cases for consoles and controllers and stuff like that. All right, so Chase just sold all these games? Yep, these are the ones from this collection. These were from a previous one. Okay. Um, private sale to one of our biggest buyers, Discord. Uh, $625 right here from the collection. All these are beautiful, sealed. Wow. So, yeah, Discord always gets first dibs. Yeah, maybe we'll keep like a, a little counter of what we've sold throughout this whole video so we'll put it up here or up there brother dave get to it that was seven games seven games for 625 i like it and we're actually going to keep a spreadsheet of everything that we're selling what platform it is sold on how much it's sold yes. for and our buy cost which for 500 games <laughs> that's a task but if we're only selling you know a couple dozen a week it's manageable hopefully we sell more than that I, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Guitaru Man for the PS2. It is not a first print, but one of our collectors in the Discord uh, really, really wants it. So we're gonna do a direct sale for $200. So we'll add that to our spreadsheet that we're just kind of using to keep track of all of the sales. But this is a good one. And we actually have another one too. We gotta sell a lot more stuff. Yeah. It's a good start though. <laughs> Make a YouTube video of behind the scenes of a whatnot auction. Looks like you guys have so much fun. Well, psychedelic, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that is the wrong adjective for this scenario, but I like it. Thank you. Shout out to Bears fan. You're now in the video. Say something else. Thank you, Matt. Sam's. I need, I need, I need, I need a home. sticky note. Oh, you need a sticky note. Here you go. No. <laughs> right, right. A number one. Number one. one and, and a, a number, number two. two. There you go. I'll write a number two next. <laughs> Right, this is what 64. happens behind the scenes. <laughs> it's the morning after the whatnot. It was a crazy, crazy night. Five-hour auction. We ended up coming over and pulling a few things from the shelf, uh, like Alien Hominid. I think we got like that, 66 bucks for that. That did not do well. That's okay. Like, it really? Yeah, that's about what it goes for. I saw it sold for 100 though. I know, and that's what this one would have sold <laughs> yeah. for because the condition is so good. I think if we would have removed the stickers, that would have helped. Yeah, but we just we we were like taking requests and pulling them live. Mm -hmm. The so good news is, the buyer. we sold that one with stickers. We do have, we have two other ones, man. That one that has a sticker, the sticker, and then there's this one. <laughs> they're, they're all <laughs> okay, right. He just bought three of them. That's <laughs> insane. Uh, we sold like the Dreamcast controllers did pretty well. I think people really appreciated the minty fresh condition of them. Mm -hmm. So we sold two of those um, for like hundred hundred ish bucks, and then the PS2 DualShock controller. That went for about like 80, something like that. I think so, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we, uh, we'll, we'll get a number for what our current sales are for this collection, but we still, we're digging out of a giant hole. And today I'm actually going to start 
going through the games that we're going to send off for grading, and we'll show what I officially decide to send off mm -hmm. for grading. And then last thing, we also, uh, by showing off a lot of this stuff, and even some of the 32X stuff out there, um, we met a lot of people that we already know about on whatnot, but uh, had some reach out and express yeah. interest in high-end stuff, which is just a benefit to, I guess, being on social media yes. potentially, but relationship building you can do that in any big forum or things it's, it's like that also another note if you're if you're in our discord basically mm -hmm. everything that we sell 20 percent off mm -hmm. so collectors love it <laughs> yeah for some collectors discord. oh gosh some people it. aren't even resellers they're just basically in there to have the community and also to get access to to deals and first dibs and stuff so Worth, worth noting if you're into this kind of stuff. But also, we did list all of the 32X games. You guys saw that, and we sold almost every single one of them. I'm shocked that just people don't know that game. They don't understand how rare that is in this condition um, because we listed them all, like, w what they're worth, and then we did, you know, up to 25% off by the end of the night, and almost everything went at, like, 15, 20, and then a lot of it cleared out at 25% off, so a lot of the stuff is over on that table. We sold Worms Armageddon. So the nice box with the game for 800 bucks. Mm -hmm. um, that was at 20% off? That was at 20% off. And, you know, that was that was on the higher end, but it's just so rare and the condition was so good that um, they were very excited about that purchase. So we made a couple sales that were like a little bit above their price charting value, some that were below the price charting value. All in all, it kind of balances out in the end, and, and I'm happy that we got some cash flow going from it. Uh, but now we got to find some ways to maximize some of this collection because, again, I paid a crazy high percentage for it. So uh, I'm excited to see some potential grades on these games. Let's get them sent off. All right, so it's about a week later, and we have made no progress selling the most expensive collection we've ever bought. A, li a little bit. A little bit? Well, I, like I guess we've, we've... Five or six games. Well, which ones? From the Whatnot Show. He lied to me. <laughs> he miscommunicated and he oh lied. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so it's about a week later and we still haven't really done much with the most expensive collection we bought. Um, Alpal has listed some stuff. Uh, Matt, have you looked into any of this for Amazon at all? I haven't gotten the go ahead. Okay. So we're just kind of sitting at it <laughs> at the moment. Um, I actually have a few people that have reached out on Instagram asking for a few specific items, uh, including like some Virtual Boy stuff. So I think we'll send off some pictures of that and then maybe hit up some of our other collectors because we've only made less than $5,000 back <clears throat> on a lot spent. So let me see if Alpal sold anything on eBay. Have you sold anything on eBay? No. All right, that was your update with Al, pal. Um, show me what uh, you have listed, though. Can you can you do that? Yes, cool. yes, I can. Thank you. I think it's mainly still just the 32X games. It's it's pretty much. <clears throat> so these bad boys right here, okay. which is like, I don't know, close to a grand right there. Yeah, the Blackthorn. List, the listed value. You yes. get a lot of it. Yes, this one is a good one. All of these are pretty good. This one is like 170. Um, and then we have. Worms Armageddon still. Okay. Uh, Ogre Battle. Nice. Star Soldier, which so, I just found out that this might have not sold yet because I realized I spelled it Solider. Yeah. So anyone trying to look it up, uh, you know, couldn't <laughs> find it. So they might have wanted it at one point, but <laughs> yes. good job. <laughs> yes. That's uh, why it's important to double check your listings. Um, but what is kind of your mental plan for some of this higher dollar stuff that's listed maybe above what comps are. Are you willing to send offers? Are you letting it sit and receive offers? What's your mentality? Um, I'm kind of less generous with sending offers and more generous with taking offers, if that makes sense. Like I kind of mm -hmm. want to test the waters and see what people are willing to offer. Um, Even I'll... considering how much money we have tied up? Yes, okay. yes, definitely considering that, um, understanding that our values are a little high, um, but a lot of it's just great condition stuff, and we don't want to let it go for too little, considering our buy, our buy cost was really high, mm -hmm. um, but I think once we get some of the sealed stuff lists on eBay, I think that stuff will go a lot quicker than the really nice condition boxes, because I think more people are looking for the sealed like GameCube and PS2 and that, rather than like the really clean N64 stuff. 
I think there's more buyers out there for like the hundred dollar item versus the four five hundred dollar item so i think when we get the sealed stuff it'll go quicker okay so looking at this then like all of these shelves are sealed yes. uh why why aren't we touching it do you know i just haven't there's just been a lot going on <laughs> okay <laughs> I, I think that's that's fine i think next week i'll prioritize getting a lot of this listed i think i'm going to focus first on gamecube because mm -hmm. I think we get sealed GameCube listed. I think it's going to move mm -hmm. really quickly. Um, next, I'm going to take a picture of these because we have a potential private buyer for at least some of these. So anything we, any private deal we can do, the better, obviously. Less fees. Um, and we want to help anyone that we know out. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm going to focus on GameCube as much as possible. Then what about like this random stuff down here that like is technically new, but like... Why are we holding on to these guys? Are we listing maybe one to test the waters or I don't any I don't, idea? I don't see why we wouldn't list them. I'm just I trying mean, to get the ball rolling, brother. You, yeah. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think I think the play is to start with GameCube just because I think those will be the quickest movers. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe PS2. I don't think like these these went well on whatnot. But I don't think there's, there, there's as many people looking for a sealed Dreamcast controller. Yeah. As there is like a sealed GameCube or PS2. <laughs> well, and it's tough because a lot of the comps don't reflect the condition very well. And even price charting has them a lot lower than I think what they should be for. Yeah. So, And that, that's also tougher. Like those are more speculative value versus most of the sealed stuff. There is like straight value that buyers will know. Okay, this is roughly what, what I'm going to be paying for this item rather if a Oh, I'm looking for a Dreamcast controller that's sealed. What's it worth? I, I don't mm -hmm. know. So I think, yeah, I think it's speculative pricing, and that's that's tough for. Mm -hmm. And then, sold. what about the CIB stuff? Like, this is a five hundred dollar game that is just sitting there. Should we list that? Or are we? Because there's also the strategy that we have is uh, we hold on to some higher end items to kind of have an incentive for people to come to some whatnots. Yes. Little little pro tip: have chase pieces that people want, and then they'll maybe want more stuff that you have. Um, yes. Speaking of chase pieces, that is, that that's that stuff is above my pay grade. That is for Chase <laughs> to decide what chase it's pieces we chase want. Piece for a uh, me personally. <laughs> Uh, I would love to list all this on eBay because I love seeing my average sales price to the roof. So, <laughs> and it's easy to list. How uh, many how many pictures would you take of a sealed game? I usually take more than necessary. I usually take one of the front and back. I take one of each corner, and then of each side. So some people don't do that, but I'm like collectors, man. I would like to know that one corner isn't like half off. Mm -hmm. Also, um, some of the sealed stuff on Amazon is fantastic it's That's so easy true. to list matt will probably have to go through these first mm -hmm. i'm guessing that you'll do more of the sony side with that the now PSP stuff will yeah most likely but that see. being said also we can't sell a lot of playstation stuff sealed on amazon so but we we are able to sell as like new um, okay when it's sealed okay um, and that price is typically like pretty good so cool that's true so yeah we will definitely have to get matt scanning through these first so maybe that should probably be high priority for you, Matt. Yeah, maybe we can get Chase to look at and just give you the go ahead for this, because like this is this row alone. <laughs> what do you think is the estimated value? Like ten thousand? I don't know. How many games are here? Yeah, I mean, and we got Goblin Commander. We got some Zelda, Metroid, Paper Mario sealed. There's two of them. Spyro. Pikmin 2. Pikmin 2. Man, no, wait. That's a real... I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> TMNT. Uh, I'm going to throw this away. No. <laughs> Early on in my therapy career, I dealt... Uh, like, I shipped out oh, this one on, instead of Beautiful Joe uh, 2 or 1. And, like, and then another person bought that one. And it was in Australia. Oh, no. <laughs> And it was from Australia, so we had to wait like three I weeks remember to get it back. that. I, like, I want to burn these games because that was like a nightmare. Oh, look. There's also this oh, one. Oh, no. <laughs> get them out of here. Just list them as a lot, then you can't go wrong. Yes. Oh, I definitely learned expensive. a lot from these as far as shipping. Like, here, I'll put them all next to each other. But, man. But, yeah. Maybe. I just think we can make a lot of money back really quickly with GameCube. I know I've said that four times, five times now. That's okay. All right. 
So. <laughs> Don't make fun of me. <laughs> so, Chase, now that you're back. Yes. I have a question for you. Okay. I would like to sell some of this on eBay. Why? Well, I'm partial to making money. I know that. <laughs> yeah. Woo! You learned something. You yeah, learned something. You know, it only took a year to learn that we actually need yes. to make money here. Yes, um, my high sell low, baby. But I wanted your advice. Something like that. <laughs> on what can go, what should be scanned on Amazon. If yes. Everything should be scanned on Amazon first. <clears throat> and also, what do you want to hold for is, is what not potential. That too. Because yeah. like, these would all be high dollar potential high dollar listings that aren't necessarily sealed get some eyes on them right so i would definitely like to have some good stuff set aside for whatnot um the ps2 psp games i think we should start uh, with amazon for those but the gamecube games i still gotta look through to see what i want to grade potentially okay um the virtual boy games I think we should just go ahead and list all these on eBay. I know we had a couple of people that were specifically interested in them. We actually sent pictures to them today. So we might get a message later okay. tonight. But oh, we can. We should still probably list them. Yes. yes. Yeah, for sure. And then these I think we should list on eBay. Um, just because I don't think as many people on Whatnot will care about, about Jaguar. Jaguar. Yeah, so the global market. Okay. So Jaguar More eBay for listings sure. that you should do are this and this bundled with the typing of the dead game because we saw a really good sold on that yeah as a bundle are these, so dude, two they separate are bundles. they are new they did not come sealed okay but yeah, yeah, original the owner thing? and he, they are but it's well kind of yes they're both dreamcast keyboards but different models so oh, this okay. is okay. the mark one and i believe that's the mark two okay but both of them go with yeah just do two different the listings dead. there get that listed and i think it was like 700 bucks one of them sold for on bid mm -hmm. For the, the bundle, bundle. Of it? the typing of the dead is expensive. Yeah, that's crazy. So that that's okay. definitely good. Um, but really, from your standpoint, start with these and these okay. and those, and we'll we'll do that. And then a lot of these GameCube games, I think, will end up going on whatnot because everybody loves GameCube. Okay. And I think those would do great. I just need to go through and see which ones I want to grade. Like some of the Zelda's, maybe the Paper Mario's, if they look perfect. The Smash Bros, um, the Metroid Prime Two. Dang, so we fully predicted what Chase would say. Did you? Yeah, we were like the Paper Marios, the, the Zeldas, the... Oh, the I popular. pointed at those, but I was like, I don't know if these want to go on eBay because I know they'll move fast, so I was kind of right. Not but, bad. Um, I think more of these controllers we can do and whatnot because people okay. really like those last time. We were wondering yep, about those. Yep. Um, yeah, what about all this, like, field controllers and... Well, I, I want to keep at least one of the some of the GameCube stuff. Mm -hmm. Um... The PS2 controllers, maybe whatnot, maybe eBay. What about these guys? I know a definitely, lot of people eBay. are interested in these. Yes. No, I don't know, but I'm, <laughs> I'm interested in that, that is actually incredibly rare. Is it, yeah, isn't most, aren't the, all the Shrek ones? Yes. Pretty yeah. much. The Shrek okay. videos are, are worth something even loose. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so for sure do, eBay. Do eBay for those, because I don't think I want to grade any of those. Uh, what about... <laughs> Would you want to be the only person to grade <laughs> Shrek <laughs> right. 1 and 2? I don't know about those yet. Okay. And that, yeah, same those with are, the Sega? clean, for sure. Same with the Dreamcast, I mean? Yeah, the Dreamcast, I'll, have to, I'll probably grade some of those. Okay. Just because the condition is perfect. Okay. Would you ever consider, like, listing stuff and then grading, like, if you decide to grade it later on, just, like, list it to the moon? And, like, or let, let it sit at a high price and I can make just a decision while, later? Yeah. I mean, that's not a bad idea. Like, we... But you'd want to do that with the highest I, I have, first, so, I so guess. some of my, like, super high-end items, I, I have, I'm doing that with. Like, I have some really high-end Magic the Gathering booster boxes that are listed super high just in case somebody wants to buy them for high or trade or something uh, but i really don't want to sell them i'll sell them for the right price though so <laughs> it makes me wonder if we should do that with any more of your collection with any more of my collection see those i don't really care about outside of being like an investment minded thing but if it's other parts of the collection, mm -hmm. yeah. You don't have anything else in your collection? Let's that you're just like, sell this first. You know, when you get all this listed, oh, you can talk to me. Chase has already condensed his collection <laughs> quite a bit, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, we're I adding to the Pokemon, but. Uh, yeah, uh, Pokemon for sure. What is, but I do have a lot of complete sets now that we can sell, just unrelated to any of this. Because <laughs> oh, okay. I have a first edition slash Shadowless base set, and I have like three other unlimited base sets. Good job. You're doing great. I'm stuck to my foot. You keep it up. I will. <laughs> now, why is this one sealed like this? So this was... It's a later a, release. Yeah, this was like a f 
Like a, not a fan made thing, but a fan made like thing. Twenty fifteen. So that's just how they sent it out. So that that's how it was sealed, I guess. Interesting. So yeah, you can list those. Okay. I won't. I won't be doing anything with those. Okay. So you, yeah, you got some good listings. Yeah, there. I got a lot of good listings. I need to make my eBay game shelf bigger because I'm running out of space. That was a great high five. Yep. All right, Al Pal. So you're back. You just kind of left me yesterday. Yeah, I just I didn't want to be here anymore. So he actually told me he hates you. Oh, that that's why. Cut that. But you've spent all today getting a bunch of stuff listed. Yes. Give me the Tons. the rundown. Yeah, I mean these are all super minty boxes. I didn't add this one because this is a re-add because stuff happened with whatnot. But all the Atari Jaguar stuff, or Jaguar yeah, as someone would call it. Um, this Gross. crazy sealed Mario Paint, um, and then these two sealed, crazy rare. I think this Chase said this is a rare version of the box. I think you already said that anyway, but. The total value without the Worms Armageddon is 8,200 listed value. Wow. So obviously that's, you know, to the moon. Um, but I mean, all of it is in super great condition. It's like after accepting offers and after fees, is that like in the 5,000 range or maybe 6,000? It depends. I mean, some of it's in great condition. We might just sit on it for a little while and see what happens. So it could be six, seven, hopefully, but. Cool. Five might be more realistic. And is we'll anything from the collection sold or no? Yes, actually, we did sell one Virtual Boy game, Wario Land, for 135 And we also have this. Shout out to this. I'm going to be listing this soon. If you guys want it, it can be yours for the low price of... Okay, Al Pal, it has yes. been a bit since I've seen you, and you got a it bunch has. of PSP games yeah, listed. a total of 56 games listed for a total of 2,500 in listed value. Nice. Um, now, some of the eBay solds were, like, all over the place. Like, there'd be a $20 sold and then an $80 sold. So I kind of had to try to really figure out what they were worth, so it took me a little longer. Okay. And then um, what were the best ones? Are these... These are the best them? ones. So these are actually 100 bucks a piece. Okay. Um, this is... The best one for sure. Guitar listed this. Hero Man. Yeah, I listed this for 150 bucks. Um, Metal nice. Slug, I think, was like in the hundred dollar range. Rent the Thought of Chinatown, I think that's like 80. And then this one, this one had like I swear I can't remember. There's like 15 dollar solds, and then there was like hundred some dollar solds. Is this just like some kind of special? I don't know if it. Yeah. So we'll see because I list that for 135. Okay. But I could definitely see this like going for way less. Hmm. I mean, the eBay solds were all over the place. Like, this one is favorites. I couldn't find, like, any yeah. favorites comps, so... Okay. We'll see. But, yeah, 2500 in listed value. A couple PSP games sold right okay. after I told you about them. Yeah. Um, this one, nothing major. Motor Storm, I think this sold for, like, $17. Motor Storm is actually a pretty fun series. Is it really? Yeah. It looks like a fun game. Not I played it lie. for PS3. If you're riding a motorcycle or a quad, you can, like, kick people off. <laughs> That is other I would, I would love that. This is a semi bowl and this sold for $58. Nice. And then this. This sold for full price at $135. Holy If cow. I look this on eBay, like the solds beneath it are like 70 and 80 bucks. So this must truly just be like an uncommon game. I, I scrolled down and I saw one sold for $135, so I'm like... What the heck? I'll put it out for that. That is but prices so... are all over place. So. Also, this is in fantastic condition. It is. It is. So this deserves a higher price. But yes, huge bolo for this. So one thirty-five. Would you say fifty-eight? Fifty-eight and seventeen. Okay. So we'll update that to the total yes. sold so far. So Sky Guy, as we were talking, both these sold for hundred bucks a piece. <laughs> for full price. To the same dude. Yeah, same person. Both of them. Okay. Maybe he's going to get them graded so maybe or something. We're, yeah, maybe. Or we're missing out. Dang, and... that one is so... Yeah, they're both really... Just look at it. I, would, would you, you just... Look, I'm, look, I'm looking at it. Would you look at it? Have them look at it. Hey, guys, can you just look at this? Comment, look at that. Hey, Skyler. Yes, Alex? A big game sold. That's what I heard. Can you you want to see it? Yes. It was okay. it Atari Carts. No, it wasn't Atari Carts. Quit asking that. I, but it was that's an what Atari I yelled game. Down. Okay. Was it the second biggest one? Yeah. Man, we have to get rid of stuff. Goodness. Uh, uh. Oh, okay. What is that? Like the second or third most expensive of the bunch? 
Yeah, we sold it for four fifty. Wow. What do we list it at? Six hundred. Okay. That's a good. So, that's... But four fifty is like tippy top. But it's still in fantastic condition. Like for that yes. kind of stuff, you just don't know what the price it at. Yeah. And I wonder, like, if there's some kind of psychological aspect, like, oh, this is priced really high. Like it must be top top condition. Yeah, I, I, I actually know. know an eBay seller that prices everything in his store super high, so he can do everything at fifty percent off. <laughs> I don't know if I agree with that strategy. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's a little extreme, but okay. there's something to it. Two end, things sold. End of the week. Yes, but let me show you a couple of things that were listed first. Okay. <laughs> this stuff Knock is still here. here. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about that. <laughs> it's been a busy so week. Three things that were listed. Oh, oh my gosh. Water world. This is over $500 listed. I got an offer for four fifteen, but I was like... It deserves no, $500, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. So after... So we got the Jack Bros back. We haven't even talked about grading yet. I'll keep that secret. Yes. But just know that this is in this, like, yes. arguably the same condition and that... <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah there's just some sticker residue. Maybe we'll go that. over uh, grades with Chase. Yes, that would be great. And then these two bye boys, unfortunately... We're trying to get the sticker off and that seal came undone. Um, but we're not going to try to get the sticker off because it was too tough. But I think these are like around 300 a piece listed. Okay. Um, yeah, and then what's sold? What do you have? Power Ooh, Stone sold. Baby. That's a big one. Yeah. Only got an Power offer Stone for, 2. Right. Got an offer for 270 I counted at 290 and they took it. Okay. I think that's And then... One. Worms. Holy! I did this not is a realize. Super minty copy of worms. It's three fifty. No, two seventy. Okay. I had it listed at three fifty, <laughs> but that was like double what nor it normally goes for. Okay. So I was like, oh, two seventy for sure. Like it's like a hundred and fifty dollar game. Okay. But I mean, in this condition, it's fantastic. So I mean, both of these are great score. I mean, great. You know, you great, know what I'm trying sale. to say. So the value of the collection technically has gone up now since we got things graded. Yes. But we have how much into grading fees? Oh gosh, I don't know. You have to ask Chase about like that. Like two thousand, maybe. Yeah, we have a lot. It's always <laughs> needed good grades. Yeah. But we'll see what we got on those. So Chase, Alex and I want to talk grades, but maybe it's best left to surprise. I'm leaving the people hanging. Can can we give like one teaser? Pick one. Uh, it can be anything. Sure. Um, the second Jet Grind Radio for Dreamcast got an 8.5 A+. That is the most underwhelming <laughs> spoiler <laughs> you could have grade given. We got. <laughs> so just know that everything I, is better than that. In all seriousness, I want to save that until the end because I think the reveal is going to be epic. Mm -hmm. So I just want to be able to... And, and real off. quick, how much do we have tied up in the grading cost? About $3,000. Okay. Hello, some things sold over the weekend. Okay. Would you like to see? Sort of. Oh, well, show I mean, me. I'll show you this guy. That's $20, no holler. Oh, gosh. <laughs> One of the greatest so, sales. So this stack sold for a total of $350. Okay. And the biggest sale of the day is BC, BC Racers, Racers for 150 bucks, which is a great sale. Nice. I'm glad that didn't sell and whatnot for 25% off. Me too. It Look at that. Yeah. yeah. And then don't forget Trevor McFur. One of the greatest. This is also games a great ever. sell. This sold for ninety dollars. Uh huh. And it's not a very expensive game. Yeah. We're getting it for ninety dollars. Is... I hear it plays a lot like BC Racers. Yeah. Yeah. I play both side by side, and they do have a lot of Same similar characters aspects. too. Yep. Quick sale. Yes. PS game sold for fifteen dollars. <laughs> do it again. <laughs> a game sold. PSP game. Siphon Filter SOCOM Dual Edition for fifteen fifty. Do you want me to do it? <laughs> hey Alex, I heard a game sold. Yeah! Dark Filter Silk! Okay, Al Pal, I heard a game sold. Yeah! Siphon Filter, Dark Mirror, and SOCOM Navy SEALs dual pack for the PSP sold for fifteen fifty. Oh, oh, only fifteen? Yeah, we're gonna throw it away. Al Pal, what blesses yeah. me with your presence? Oh, wow. Well, some games sold. Oh, cool. Yeah. What is that? These oh. are both sealed. Um, Isn't it metal. all? <laughs> twisted Metal Black. And Deadlocked for Ratchet. That's the way to say it. But what about that <laughs> stuff? <laughs> uh, this is Tricky of the SSX. Okay. And Clash of the Mario. Oh, for the, so, for the boy of virtual. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, so this sold for 40. This was for 45. This was for 280, mm -hmm. which is a great sale. And this is actually the best sale of 120. And the reason nice. it is because price sharing has it like 20 bucks. Oh. It's so weird with sealed stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very rare to be sealed like this, and it's in great condition. Mm -hmm. So Just the nature of apps that gather sales, they're going to be off of it. Yeah. Um, and then also, we had a big whatnot uh, a couple days ago, yeah. and oh, a I bunch of stuff sold. I, I wrote down everything that sold. I have that on, list. I, had, I don't know the total yet. But. Okay, so let's uh, we'll regroup when we get the total. Okay. Hi, Chase. What How up? long has it been? <sighs> Two months? A month and a half? Two months? It's been a long time recording. Alpal's been keeping track of all of our numbers along the way. Right. We're gonna uh, catch up with him and see what our total sales at are for the collection shortly. Total sales at are. Sorry, that's what you said. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna ask him at the very end. Yes. Um, this is very exciting. We have three boxes back from WADA, which in theory are some of the biggest games in the collection. And we're going to see what the grades were. Before we get to the graded games, you guys got to check out our channel sponsor, XYAB. You can get $50 off your first order of $100 or more using our link below. They're a video game accessory supplier. We love them. They're a dream sponsor for the channel. If you sell video games, check them out. But now let's get to the games. A lot of games from a lot of games. Whoa. Look at that. I got a nice what, what little is, thing. What is that? Collectors. Helping collectors pursue their passion. Well, thank you. Does WADA partner with PSA? WADA is owned by Collector's Universe, which owns PSA. There you go. Yes. Okay. You ready, Matt? We're going to see some grades. Yay. We're going to go rapid fire because there's a lot of games. Oh, my goodness. The ones that I'm most anticipating are Jack Bros for Virtual Boy, the Pokemon games for N64 and Game Boy, but there's a number of other crazy ones so let's get to it first off god of war god of war for psp 9.6 a plus Whoa, that's did they solid. do their labels like this now this is a new label yep wow new label new case i think it's a little bit different there's no like gap in the yeah. back anymore i like this more so on modern games like that probably 9.6 is like that's the lowest i would want to get so i was looking at everything with a fine tooth comb and hoping that grades will be high but if it's on cardboard i'd be okay with like even 8.5, 9.0 and above. There's another one, 9.8 A+. Nice. There you go. So why'd you pick these games? They're just a little bit more uh, desirable and uh, like big, big series, God of War. Yeah. So iconic series. This Usually like, are, are pretty good to grade. This one's different too. So it got a bonus. Yeah, it's a different print. So that's nice. Okay. Manhunt 2, that's kind of a fail. 9.2 A+. That might be like a break even. Must have been the comb you were using. It yes. ruined it. Yes. Actually, the first batch that I sent off, I didn't like detail and clean them mm. with like, you know, very soft cloth and stuff, which might have affected it. Just looking at, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Mario Clash. There you go. 9.0 A+. I will definitely take that for Virtual Boy. That's a Man. big one. That's definitely going to be a significant value increase right there. Uh, another Ooh. Virtual Boy, Wario Land 9.2 A+. Ooh. Not bad at all. That's very, very good. It's a lot tougher to get high grade on cardboard. For those that don't know, two different grades. So the, the rating, the number, is the condition of the case or the box. And then the seal grade is the letter. So 9.4 A, that's a big one on JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. That's cool. That's fine. I mean, jewel case can be tougher because these things crack very easily. Is it A because of the sticker? Or should that Maybe, not factor in? That's like an original, not even a retail sticker. So yeah. No, I w that, wouldn't, that wouldn't hurt the grade. It probably just has like a minor tear somewhere, it would yeah. be my guess. Micro tear. Micro tear, yeah. Manhunt 2, that's Ooh. better. 9.6 A plus on this one. I probably couldn't have told you the difference on those in sending them off. <laughs> But they look at them a little bit closer than I did. Ooh, Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts. So it is the rainbow foil, which I believe is first print. Kingdom Hearts 2. 9.6 A+. That's really solid, especially that it's first print. That's going to make a difference. They made later prints that they sold for really cheap on their website direct. So getting the first print makes a big difference for those that don't know. 
There you go. Wow. Katamari 9.8A plus the Sony security label first print on that one. And that's the first of its kind of that series, right? So that's a that's, great, that's solid. That's 9.8 is, you're not really getting 10s. You're not going to ever get 10s. It's possible, but it'll never happen. So 9.8 is basically considered gem mint. Like we the got, most recent 10s were on Switch games. So yes. like it has to be new. Yeah, 10s are incredibly rare. All right, N64. There's Ooh. two of them coming up. So we could I don't even Pokemon. remember what we sent. Could be a Pokemon Puzzle League in one of these. Okay. Ooh, Quake. Quake, <gasps> ooh, wow. A++? Plus plus? That's our first A++ seal grade. 9.4 A++. That's an amazing grade on an N64 wow. game. Look at that. A++. Ooh, A++. So that nice. is, that's crazy. fantastic. Extra credit, Mr. Krabs. <laughs> <gasps> there it is. Wow. 9.4 A+. I'm thrilled with that. That is going in the collection. Um, that would probably be a value increase of at least $500, I think. Wow. Um, so that's a, that's a huge one. Keep in mind, it costs, um, it's like 60 bucks to 60 ish dollars to grade a game, but then fees and insurance and everything comes to like 80, 90. Um, and that includes shipping and return shipping. You gotta factor in all expenses. That is beautiful. That's a huge one. We still got Jack Bros coming up. We've still got a lot Where of other heavies. It? GameCube, we haven't touched any of the GameCube yet. So, what would be a fail on Jack Bros? You've never really graded anything complete in box. That's not secret. I, I don't even have any idea. I don't think anybody does. Yeah, I'm <laughs> just like, it was so clean. I felt too scared to own it without a case around it. All right, there's just a few games in this one. There you go, 9.8 A+, Castlevania, Dracula X, Chronicles. That's the grade you want to see. Oh. What is, is this Final Fantasy? Oh, gosh. Seven? <laughs> That's right. Oh, my God. That's insane. That got an 8.5. Yeah, so this was the firehouse game. Came yeah. from a, a house that burned down, and I was very disappointed when I got it, the condition of it. But I spent a lot of time cleaning it, and I was hoping it would get like a 5.0 C. It got an 8.5 B+. Plus. That's nuts. I don't know where that puts this game value-wise, but it's in the thousands, I think. Does it, does it have the mark for the water damage? Let's see. Yeah, moisture damage on case. Funny they call it moisture damage. That's not what it was. It was fire damage. <laughs> yeah. Goodness. The complete opposite. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they had to the make a special element. thing for it. Yeah. Okay. So. That, that's a fail. 9.28 uh, plus. That is uh, probably lost money on that one. What the heck happened? I don't know. I mean, maybe I should have looked closer. I don't know. There you go. <laughs> that's <laughs> a better one, though. <laughs> right next to it in the box was that. 9.8 A plus. Is this the most valuable game Silent Hill series wise? For PSP, I don't know. I mean, that one on all different systems has good value. PSP, it still does. Not sure. A couple hundred, probably. Comic Zone. Whoa. That's cardboard. 9.2A+. I was, like, very impressed with the condition of these cardboard games. There's a little bit on the top. It's just got a little top bit of corner right. wear and stuff. So just kind of normal sense. stuff. That's a great grade on cardboard. Another cardboard. What is this? Ooh, Ooh nice. Whoa. Sonic 3D Blast, 9.4A++. On a Big. Sega game? Bless you. Yes. <laughs> Impossible. On a Sega cardboard game. And we got one more in this box. And then I'm thinking the last one is going to be yeah, make sure there's the biggest one. Hidden. Oh. <gasps> what? <laughs> Clock tower. So, so this is also a firehouse game. <laughs> I wouldn't have guessed that. 9.8 A+. <laughs> I can't believe that. Insane. What's Clock Tower worth? Just complete. A uh, few hundred. It's a, it's a big one. Man. Um, I think regular sealed is a thousand, but a nine point eight A plus is probably like four to five thousand. <laughs> and and again, I would not have expected that grade out of a game that was sitting in the ashes of a burned down house. Okay. That's it for that one. Oh. All right. Last one. <laughs> Very, very good results so far. Just a couple a couple fails, but nothing major. All right, got to open this one up still. I think this is a lot. I feel like, you know what? I don't know. I don't know if this is everything or not, but we'll see. <laughs> I just got an email saying that there's two more on the way, but I didn't think that was possible. It's just two single games. They had to hold on to Jack Bros and send it in its own box. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Their packaging is like absolute top tier. 
Yep. I mean, look at this. This is unbelievable. We've had other graders. We have. <laughs> they're the best. <laughs> Say what you will. I still like WADA. I think their, their product is really good. They're owned by Collector's Universe, which is a positive thing. You can grade with whoever you want. CGC is good. BGA, good product, but terrible service. And shipping. And also, it's like 150 bucks minimum to grade. 60 for Still? this. Still? Still. Man. So VGA, get better, guys. If you're watching, get better. <laughs> Lower your prices. I don't know. You've got to be competitive in the market. Things the, are changing. The free market right? is bringing out a lot of competition here. <laughs> VGA has been around the longest. And mm -hmm. if you get a VGA 100, that'll give you the highest premium. But, ooh, there's a win. Harvest Moon for GameCube, 9.8A. You like to see it. Yeah. Do we have a lot of GameCube in this? It's looking like it, yeah. Okay. Jack Rose is not in here. Oh. Those boxes are coming later today, so Dang right it. after this, we're going to see. Okay. There's two more coming, apparently. 9.4A, that's a fail. Mega Man X Collection. Ugh. Bummer on that. 9.6A plus, decent on Metroid Prime Echoes 2. Target exclusive. Look at that. That's pretty nifty. 9.6A plus. That so that's same? the black label. Oh. But it is slightly different. There you go. 9.8A okay. plus on Paper Mario, the Thousand Year Door. Good timing awards on this one. Yeah, because they, they just announced it. The remaster coming out. 9.8A, that's solid. Would have loved to see an A plus, but we'll take it. On Zelda. 9.8A plus. There it is. Aha. <laughs> <laughs> you get what you wish for. Twilight, that's decent. 9.6A. I'd say it's still a good value increase. Then we have... Oh, that's huge. 9.8A nice. plus on that's the other Twilight nice. Princess. Ooh, Beautiful Joe 2, 9.8A plus. That's good. Love it. Last one. And another 9.8A plus. Fantastic on the GameCube. Dang. I guess we still have two more giant boxes coming because we got a lot more games left. I remember there was like some PS1 we sent out. Some PS1, definitely more Virtual Boy, and at least two other boxes because I got the tracking saying they're coming today. Okay. Um, we're going to hold off on what we think the value increase will be, but this will give me a little bit of time to research. We'll come back to you guys with two more boxes and an estimated projection of value increase on these grading minus the fees that it costs of $2,000. The boxes have arrived. I cannot wait come on. to see the final reveal. We got two boxes. They both feel full. Oh yeah, there was a lot more games than I initially realized. Get these out of here. Excellent packaging. Ooh. Let's go rapid fire. You ready for it? Rapid fire. Oh, nine point eight a plus. Big one. Xenosaga three. Holy Fantastic. Cow. Super pinball for SNES. I debated a that, but a plus plus. It's great seal grade. Nine point two a plus plus. Holy crap! I'll take it. I'll take it on cardboard. Ooh, nine point eight a plus on an iconic Dreamcast title, Jack Grind Radio. That's that's pretty nice. That's fantastic. What? what? This must have a crack. 8.5 A plus on the other one. See? Does it, does it have notes? Yep, cracking crack. case. Dang it. In the back. I missed it like a ding dong. Okay, <laughs> next one. Oh, oh. 9.6 B. Okay, oh. I knew the seal was had a massive tear. The seal had a massive tear in it. That's kind of surprising. It's a, that big one in the back, right? Do they lay yeah. it down nice? Uh, it's, it's right up here. Yeah, right up here. Yeah, but like that's a reasonable seal grade, and 9.6 is fantastic. That's going in the collection. Heck yeah. It's a really good box grade. Like, that's impressive. N64 coming up. Woo. WCW Revenge 9.0A. That's okay. Stone Cold Goldberg right there. That's the one. Okay, next one. Let's continue on. There we go. Final Fantasy VIII. Oh, it's 9 so bad plus. it's greatest hits. But I know. That's still fantastic. It's like the best grade you can get. Just about Super Tennis. First print. 9.6A+. plus. Nice. Not bad. You're collecting those. <laughs> that's my third one. That's funny. Woo! 3D oh, Tetris, 9.6A. The, are there notes on this one? No, no notes. Hey. Probably the, that on the back. That's why it got an A. Yeah. I tried to get that off. I couldn't get it off. It was a security sticker. It'll just ruin the seal. Straight from Target in the and 90s. This is, oh, oh my gosh. This is it, baby. 9.6. Are you kidding me? Oh. That it. That is, that's, that's a crazy, this is CIB, this is not <laughs> sealed. The box got a 9.6, cart got a 9.6, manual 9.4. That is unreal. Nine, that's that's got to be the finest copy, used copy, in the world. Well, I mean, he said he opened it with an X-Acto knife. You can he still bought see. it sealed, It looks too. sealed, the seal's around it. He, yeah, he just 
took the seal off the very top and folded it back over. Why didn't we just tape it shut? Surely <laughs> oh they wouldn't have been gosh. able to tell. <laughs> Dwight, nicely done keeping that one. If you're watching this, you kept that thing minty. And we got one more box to finish with. The value increase just got significant. Matt's dying. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> 9.2 A+. Very nice. Teller Boxer. Sealed. Are all these virtual, boy? This is virtual. Another complete 9.6. Nestor's Funky Bowling. Nestor's fun See, that one was so clean. I was like, yeah, it's still worth it. A surprising heavy. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not bad. It's a. There's only, what, 16 games on Virtual Boy <laughs> yeah. US? So that's one of the bigger ones. Boom. Another one. 9.8 A+. Plus, Kingdom Hearts first print. The rainbow cover. Dude, these grades are insane. Like, these last two boxes have been fantastic. Vector Man 2, that's solid. 9.2 A++. Plus. A plus. second Sega A++. Plus plus. <laughs> Love that. 9.2 A++ plus on six pack. What is wrong with that? The seal looks a little looser, so maybe there's a small tear. Oh, that's the baggie. Oh, no, you're right. That is on the on the seal. I don't know. Yeah. Still A plus. A little or... something going on. Yeah. Actually, no, I think that there's a baggie underneath. Uh, 9.6 A plus on this one. We're going as fast as we can. Zelda for GBA. Man. It's not bad at all. These are good games, too. Oh, yes. <gasps> Ooh. The Mona Lisa. Dang, this has been on my shelf forever. When I went to Paris, the yeah. Louvre. Like five six years ago yep <laughs> oh my god it's still got a 9.6 a plus what variant is uh it? this is the korean version okay so the the most expensive one is the english version the uk flag second is the french version and okay. then i don't know where that one ranks but that's still really cool boom 9.8 a plus animal crossing Let's baby go. that's Love what we like that. to say there's so many here 9.8 a plus uh, and, and yeah, it was like over $3,400 that I invested in grading these, by the way. Brother Dave in nope. the editing room probably already <laughs> corrected that, but. 9.8 A plus wow. Wind Waker. That's great. You got a good eye for, for this stuff now. 9.6 A plus for Beautiful Joe. That's the first Man. one. I'll put that there. Do we have a, so that was three Beautiful Joes. Yeah. And then the last one, WarioWare Inc. 9.8 A for GameCube. There's not any more? Phenomenal grades. Um, I'm gonna crunch some numbers real quick and guesstimate the value add to grading these. All right, I've looked at everything in pretty good detail. There's 50 games that I graded. A couple fails, but mostly wins, and honestly, some massive wins. This Jack Bros is gonna be, I think, where is it? A multiple thousand dollar there increase. Uh, I just think that being the best used copy in the world is going to demand a premium. Among a lot of 9.8 A pluses adding significant value, I think an average after the cost of grading to be $300 in value add per game, it's a rough guess, but somewhat educated seeing as I've, I've sold, bought and sold a lot of graded games and sealed games and stuff. That's a $15,000 value add. That is nuts. Now it did take $3,400 investment and I had to wait two months to get them back. Yes. And there's definite risk in the fact that a lot of these could have got lower grades, but thankfully Dwight kept his games in beautiful condition. And now they're like amazing <laughs> display pieces. Very cool. But now for the numbers, like let's put that into context. The final numbers. So we've been keeping track over the last month, two months, including mm -hmm. some sales from whatnot and Amazon. Yeah. Do you have a guess at where we are in actual sales? Actual sales, gosh. Maybe like 15,000. We're at 18.5. So 18.5. I was a little bit surprised too, but also the top 20% of the games are right here. <laughs> here they are. So like that's yeah. that's kind of why we didn't, you know, break our buy cost. We still have a lot to go before we we make our money. Yes. Yeah, um, that's not we're not even getting close to my buy cost on the games yet, but I'm optimistic at this point. Like, yeah. once we start getting the ball rolling on these. So, if you guys buy a high end collection or a large collection and you don't have a lot of money to work with, uh, I wouldn't do this. Yeah, for our $10 business on this channel, wouldn't recommend this strategy. It's keeping your capital tied up for a long time. Like, I would have tried to sell Jack Bros as quick as possible. Yeah. Uh, and then just go highest 20% highest get that sold to make my money back. Which makes sense, but in this case, I decided to sell some things quickly, like on whatnot and other places, and get some cash flow back, but also to maximize where it makes sense to maximize, and that's what we did. So this is a, a beautiful return, a crazy video, a ton of work, 
You guys, if you made it this far, you're like the 5%. So comment 5%, hit the like button, and stay tuned because we have so much planned for this channel. We appreciate you guys. We love you. Bartle do.